Our journey with Eleutherus has been an interesting one, and not at all what we expected from the day Mark started building her. We assumed that the boat would be built in one location, like most boats are, not in seven different locations. But it all worked out anyhow. In 2015, we moved to PEI. Heading to the east coast to PEI from rural southwestern Ontario brought us new experiences. Up in Tignish, we enjoyed watching a horse pull. That was new to us. And the color of the soil is definitely red. And there is an abundance of potatoes grown in it all over the island. The folks are friendly and very helpful. We went from small farm towns to living in small fishing villages along Prince Edward Island's coast. Before finishing the interior on Eleutherus, Mark went lobster fishing for 10 weeks. We really enjoyed that job. He had a great bunch of guys to work with. This was Eleutherus' last move to Beach Point before we launched her. After a couple years of living here and knowing our lease was coming to an end and we had 11 months left, we decided it's time to get this boat finished and launched. It had been 18 years up to this point, so the time was right to get her done. Also while Mark had been building Eleutherus, he had been working full time. Eleutherus was launched on August 28, 2021. It was almost hard to believe that the day had finally arrived. Then two months of a long list of projects before the boat was actually ready for its first sail. The day finally arrived for our first sail. We were pretty nervous and excited. Mark had a hard time to let that last line go from the dock, but once he could feel the helm respond well, he felt much better and I could see a smile come on his face. Eleutherus is engineless, so we had to sail off the dock, so that went fine. We knew at the end of this sail that we had to sail into the slip in Surrey to be hauled out for the winter. That went okay, but could have been better. I put a little ding in the rub rail, since I was one on the tiller. Eleutherus was left in Surrey, Prince Edward Island for the winter, and we headed over to Inganish, Cape Breton, where Mark worked for a contractor. I was pretty happy about living there on the Cabot Trail because it is so beautiful in the highlands. This was the most remote area in Canada that we had ever lived. Sydney was the closest city and was an hour and 20 minute drive away and there was not much in between. It was a beautiful drive. There is many hiking trails in the Highlands National Park. There was a few close by we hiked on often. In the spring of 2022, we headed back to Prince Edward Island to get Eleutherus ready once again for the water. We stayed in the slip overnight and left early the next morning with no time to adjust to the motion of the boat. We are on the east coast of Canada. On June 3rd, we sailed from Surrey Prince Edward Island to Shetty Camp, Cape Breton. This was our first time being at anchor. Once we got in closer to the land, the wind died and Mark had to scull for a good hour. It was a beautiful night. The anchor was down by 11 o'clock. This 
was our second sail on Eleutherus. Mark did some dinghy sailing for a couple years as a teenager, and I had no experience sailing. Heading across to Shattucamp tested the boat and us. I was seasick and nervous. Mark was naturally nervous, but quite happy he was able to set the boat to sail on her own to windward, and overall he was happy with her performance. Here is our first anchorage with the beautiful view of the highlands in the background. It's a little chilly yet this time of year, so we set up the chimney and got the wood stove going. Quite calm this morning compared to coming over here. We tried to carry on sailing to Inganish, but we lost our wind. A while later in the day, enough wind came up so we could sail back and anchor for another night. Is it preventer on here? No, it's not. That's why it's swinging around. I'm scared I'm going to get hit in the head. Finally on the third day, we were able to carry on sailing. By late afternoon, the wind died off, but we seemed to be drifting along the coast in the right direction. Later in the night, the wind filled in a bit. This was our first sail overnight. We didn't plan it that way, but once you've sailed past Shetty Camp, there's really no anchorages on the west side of Cape Breton. Once the sun was up, the wind was still light. The lobster fishermen are out as we are coming up to Cape St. Lawrence on the north end of the island. We were very thankful to have such a beautiful sunny day to enjoy this awesome view. The trees look very small on the sides of the mountains. This was the first time that I really enjoyed sailing, the calm conditions and the beautiful scenery. It was then that I understood why people liked sailing so much. The wind picked up and we were glad to be moving along at six and sometimes seven knots. The wind was getting shifty. We had to tack out one more time to get into Inganesh Harbour. We made it into Inganish Harbour and the anchor was down by late afternoon. At the dock we tied stern to with an anchor out. This way the boat was facing the worst of the chop on windy days. This was a much better arrangement for this harbour. We stayed here for the summer with us both working. We had shore power and had to bring water to the boat. In September, we experienced our first tropical storm. We probably didn't need four anchors out, but when you're new to all this, 
life. It's better to overdo it than wish you had been more prepared. Luthrus got through the swarm unscathed. We spent the month of October focusing on getting more projects done. On November 3rd, we left Inganish to sail down to Lewisburg. Marco is hoping to sail offshore from there and head down to the Caribbean. But after sailing a couple of hours out in strong conditions, the mizzen gooseneck broke. The necessary repair and improvement to both goosenecks would take up too much time, so he cancelled going. Before reaching Lewisburg, we first sailed down to Sydney. It was another overnight sail because we lost our wind a few times and we didn't leave Enganish till early afternoon. It was really beautiful to see the sun going down behind the mountains. After being in Sydney for two nights to catch up on sleep, we sailed around to Myra Bay. We had a sporty sail out of Myra Bay and into the Manadu Passage after we had to sail off the anchor for the first time. We safely made it into Lewisburg Harbor. Eleutherus was hauled out and on the hard with the fishing boats for the winter. So we went back and spent another winter in Inganish, Cape Breton. We headed back to Lewisburg in the middle of May to get Eleutherus ready for another season of sailing. We're basically wet sanding the hull and cleaning it at the same time. The repairs to the gooseneck were also completed. And the sculling oar was shortened. It was time to go. We pulled up the anchor and headed back to Sydney. Lots of lobster pots out here today. We 
spent three weeks in Sydney Harbor sailing around to different anchorages according to the weather. And we became more comfortable with sailing off the anchor and anchoring. We sailed back to Sydney with the idea of spending the summer on the Bedore Lakes in Cape Breton. But plans changed and we carried on. We spent the summer of 2023 sailing down the coast of Cape Breton and mainland Nova Scotia with many stops along the way. After sailing back into Myra Bay and anchoring, we did some exploring and discovered a huge salt marsh. We sailed out of Myra Bay in the fog with a forecast that it would lift, but it did not. We were thankful we made it into Lewisburg during the day. From Lewisburg, Mart went on his first solo sail to St. Peter's. He was not expecting it to become a 23-hour sail. We are anchored here off of Ile Madame, near St. Peter's. Cape Breton. We have a nice calm evening. It's a very quaint little island. I've been on a couple of walks and it's quite pretty. So we carried on and sailed across Chibucto Bay in light winds using our Genoa for the first time. We were pleased it kept us going about four knots. Once you're in Canso, it's the last stop that you can make to stock up at the grocery store until you sail up into Sheet Harbor. If you like sailing in the wilderness, Nova Scotia has a beautiful rocky coast with many anchorages to choose from and many small fishing ports along the way. This wilderness trail is in the Duck Cove Provincial Park near Dover. Another nice picnic table. Have a picnic on the trail. Yeah. Right by the water. It's pretty nice. Sitting around. So what do you think of the sail so far now, Mark? Going good. Nice conditions out here. Broad reach. We're making really good progress today. Right, right now we're going 6.4 knots and we are just passing Tora Bay, which is Big Bay. And the wind is just nice and it's offshore. So it's kind of pretty pretty pleasant and pretty relaxed today. Um, yeah, I'm finding this a little tricky, all this sailing, in, but I'm getting used to it. I'm getting there. So. a nice spot near Harbor Island. So 
again, we're heading to as far as we can get. Well, Sheet Harbor is our goal today. Yeah. So nice anchorage here. Go on Fort Cox. Nice quiet morning. Almost close hauled now. Yeah, it's true. Wind is shifting to the west a bit more. But we don't have to tack, we can just keep one long board along the coast. We could have sailed offshore further and made navigating easier, but we enjoyed seeing all the islands. We sailed past Pumpkin Island before heading up into Sheet Harbor. direction of Halifax. See how far we get today. Sunrise is pretty this morning. From Sheet Harbor area, we sailed into Halifax Harbor. It was a long day, but we covered some good distance, even though we were becalmed a few times. We anchored on the north end of McNabb's Island. We had a nice warm day to go for a hike. We did not know there was World War I and II fortifications on it. This one's big. Huge. Never seen one that big. From McNabb's Island, we sailed up to the Bedford Basin and anchored near the Dartmouth Yacht Club. Bridge is 150 feet. We sailed up into Dartmouth so we could reprovision. We had good protection here from most directions. Yeah, even living on the boat, we don't get out of firewood, eh? Nope, still cutting firewood. So that's nicely filled up. We were glad we were still here when Hurricane Lee was coming up the coast toward the Maritimes. Yeah. Not like when we're cruising, I, I'm I'm real particular about <laughs> garbage. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, here we go. The cooks are at it. We are on Dan's boat. He uh, offered to let us stay on his 60 footer here. Thought it would be a little more comfortable. We're anchored out over there. I don't know if you can see it. We had good protection here being so close to the land. We really enjoyed hanging out with Dan on his boat during this storm. All the people you meet along the way has been a real highlight, enjoying the company of other sailors and hearing all their stories. Wow, we're still trucking along, eh? 7.2 knots? 7.6. Really? 
really good. Nice, that is good. We carried on sailing toward Lunenburg with one stop overnight in Prospect Bay. We had some fast and enjoyable sailing. Our adventure with Eleutherus has been a long one with lots of life lessons along the way. We will see what this year brings. Please like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps us out. Thanks for watching.